All right. Let's take my pen. And we, we are rolling. Any, anytime you're ready. Okay. Uh, what's up, guys? My name is Brandon, and I'm here to talk to you guys about poor sleeping habits, but more along the lines of sleep deprivation. So we all know what sleep is. I mean, we all love to do it. Like, quick show of hands, who loves to sleep? Yeah, it's pretty much everyone. <laughs> so like, I have yet to meet one person who doesn't like, you know, to take a nap during their spare time, you know, especially for us college students. So what exactly is sleep? And the definition for that is to take the rest aff afforded by suspension of voluntary bodily functions and natural suspension of consciousness, which in simpler words is we're not awake. Um, so sleep is very important to our health. It is important to our health, our well-being, and after we sleep, you know, we always feel rejuvenated after we sleep. And not getting enough of it can be really harmful to our body. Now the real question is, how much sleep do we really need? Now researchers have shown that like, seven to eight hours is the recommended time for sleep. But is that really the recommended time? Well, yes but it's not really the recommended time for everyone. Each individual has their own specific sleep schedule and there really is no like magic number for um, how much sleep we really need, well for it individual wise. But sleep decreases within age, so like when we're babies, we get uh, 12 to 14 hours of sleep. Um, and as we grow older, it decreases and de decreases. So adults normally get you know, seven to eight hours. And you know, as we're babies, we usually get like nap time and all that stuff. And but does that really mean we should limit ourselves to seven to eight hours? Well, the answer is no. We really should get those seven to eight hours of sleep because it really is recommended that we should be able to get the right amount of sleep every single night. And not getting enough could really uh, lead to major issues on our health and our body. So the effects of sleep deprivation, uh, one effect is called sleep debt. Uh, when we're in debt, we usually you know, owe, owe something to someone or like say money-wise, we owe money to someone. When we're in sleep debt, we owe sleep to ourselves. So say you sleep four hours one night and then you sleep. Yeah, you sleep four hours one night and then you owe another four hours the next day. So if you keep getting less amount of sleep each time, it grows and grows and grows. So picture a balloon. And a balloon is, when you start off, it's really small. And then when you keep blowing, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, once it gets bigger, like say you have like a cheap balloon, uh, it eventually pops. Now when that pop, it's you crashing. That's you crashing during the daytime, it's you crashing when you're uh, during class and all that. So, it's really good to get those seven to eight hours and you won't feel drowsy or woozy during the day. Now, there are some things to keep you from crashing throughout the day, such as, you know, coffee, energy drinks, you know, pure willpower. But then again, coffee and energy drinks, they're not really, you know, good for you. So they can have really effects on um, health issues and um, can seriously lead to some other uh, symptoms. So some of the symptoms of sleep deprivation are poor mood, irritability, low energy, poor judgment. Um, and it gets really hard for us to comprehend of what's happening uh, with our surroundings when we're all you know, sleepy throughout, throughout the day. And it could also increase your appetite. Uh, usually people who are sleepy, they seem to be more hungry. They want to eat more. And when they eat more, obviously it leads to you know, obesity and stuff like that and you become overweight. Um, some other symptoms can be immune function, uh, heart attack, and stroke. And now since these kind of things aren't really, you know, stuff we should worry about because we're all <coughs> the younger generation, but uh, as we get older, it could be life-threatening, so it's good to get a good amount of sleep. And one last point I'd like to point out is sleep, depri sleep deprivation and driving. Uh, since many of you guys are commuters, uh, you guys drive to school every day, and you guys are probably, you know, tired if you have like an 8 a.m. class in the morning. And one statistic I found was 100,000 car crashes happen each year because of people who are just, you know, tired behind the wheel, 
and they didn't get enough sleep. So that's a pretty large number just for you know people who didn't get enough sleep like last night. And one of the effects that uh, sleep deprivation can have when you're driving is the lack of sleep and it could greatly impair your vision. Now, it's not as severe as drunk driving, but it's still pretty serious. So in, conclu in conclusion, uh, sleeping is a vital part of our health and our daily life. Uh, we should really get the seven to eight hours that is highly, it is highly recommended that you guys get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. And the topics I've covered were the amount of hours of sleep you have, uh, the effects of sleep deprivation, sleep deprivation on our health, and sleep deprivation on, on driving. And a quote by Dalai Lama, he said that sleep is the best meditation. So, you know, it's good to get the right amount of sleep. And we should always keep in mind that we should always have a consistent sleep schedule. Because, you know, even though we're college students, we shouldn't have a bedtime. But, like, it's really not really maybe I should have a bedtime. But it is, like, we should have a bedtime. Like, you'll be able to wake up every morning and stuff like that. So, I hope you guys know that, like, uh, you guys won't be able to sleep 4 o'clock in the morning and wake up for an 8 a.m. class. And, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you.